Hey everyone, today we're going to work on repairing a vintage Toastmaster. So this antique Toastmaster is a model 1B14, uh, based on this serial number. This one I believe uh, is 1952. And we've had a problem with this lately where the one toaster element of the four isn't working and also the toast is not popping up if it's on the light setting. So we're gonna troubleshoot and fix both of those problems today. I did restore this myself a few years ago. I replaced the cord with a cloth insulated cord um, and checked out all the components, but we use this pretty much daily, weekly basis. And so uh, there's gonna be some periodic things we'll have to look at and this is one of them. First step here, we're going to take off the screws on the bottom plate here, on the Bakelite side pieces here, and over here as well. Okay, with the screws out, four screws out from here, I just popped off the bottom crumb tray. Uh, here's your light and dark setting, so I'm just going to turn this to the left counterclockwise and remove this knob so that we can allow the Bakelite piece to slide off the bottom. So we'll take that out as well and now we'll work on these two screws here. Also I almost forgot the two screws here as well. We're gonna have to be careful with the power cord. Okay so now we can pull the first Bakelite piece off and be careful this will slide right out. You're going to have crumbs in there to clean out, even no matter how good you are at cleaning it. Okay, on this side, it's a little more tricky because you have the power cord here, but you do have to kind of jimmy it down, and then it will loosen and come off here. And you see there's a little metal clip, the spring that attaches for the crumb tray. And we'll just work that piece out and through there, and then that'll free like that and set that to the side. I'm sure this stays flush because there's a bunch of little separators for toast to prevent them from hitting the heating elements and we don't want to let this come out yet and there's also some uh, ceramic insulators up top I'll show you so before we do anything else we're going to screw that in all the way to the right not hard just to the rightmost setting that'll allow it to clear the inside of this notch so I'm holding this in place now uh, and I'm going to stand it back up now that the Bakelite pieces have been removed, okay? And from this position, we're gonna gently lift off the uh, outer chrome piece. Now, it's gonna hit resistance like this along the way because you have to clear um, not only the knob here, but on the back are the two uh, power connectors. set that to the side. Here's a quick way to show you the operating mechanism of the latch. And so if you remember here we had the Toastmaster Bakelite piece on the front and this lever would slide down um, in this slot here this arm would go. And so when you push this down you'll see this arm will come down and a little latch will catch it. So we'll just push this down, down, down to here. And now in this position, this little catch holds the arm in place. You have uh, the electrical contacts come down here and they begin uh, the heating process. And then as this thing heats, it's gonna bend and pull back. I'll show you underneath and eventually release by allowing this piece to come back. So I'm gonna hold it down here. And if I just pop that back, this piece comes up and then the entire mechanism releases. And when it releases, the electrical contact is separated. And that's what keeps it from staying on. There are uh, eight, there should be eight of these ceramic cylinders, hollow cylinders. Also, hopefully, you're going to have 16 of these 
separators. Okay, so those are gonna be um, very difficult because if you start taking this apart upside down, those are all gonna fall out and it's gonna make a mess. So what we'll do now is we'll just lift these out. So you can always clean these if you need to. These are in decent shape. Uh, same thing now, we'll take out each of these uh, ceramic insulators. Two more screws in here, right there and there. We'll take off this plate as well as this shield here. This is the back side of one of the heating elements um, and very, very delicate and fragile. So we'll have to be very careful um, not to uh, crack or otherwise puncture this. The heating elements you can see here are just wrapped around the back and then they circle through on the front loop. And then okay, back. so from my previous work on this toaster, we had one of these heating elements uh, broken. And I put a screw in here with a little plate to hold it in place. And I can see now why it's not working, because it popped out. So you can see here the heating element is loose. I have to take this, this piece out. And as you can see, it fits into these two holes here. Again, the ceramic, if you remember, the ceramic little cylinders would insulate it there. And so to take that piece out, I'm gonna take out this screw here. There's a nut on the outside. I'm gonna loosen that first. And that's a quarter inch here. So I'm just gonna get that out. Okay, now this piece is in the way a little bit. Hold it up out of the way. Just to allow me to pull this out. Let's take the other one out down here. Take that nut off. And then I'm just gonna work this in from the inside and slide that piece out. You can see here the broken piece right here. And so I had that previously attached by pinching it underneath this metal here. So I'm gonna to try to reattach that now. Here, I used an old electrical connector with an eye hole and I put it through and I would pinch that wire to bridge this gap. I grabbed another one and when I put the screw and the bolt back in, it's enough to just pinch that and hold it in place. And that'll make the connection and we'll test out the heating element. Check to make sure the connection is good. Okay. Okay, almost forgot. Make that final electrical connection. We got to put this last piece in place. Make sure these ceramic pieces are in. In order to get the toaster to just um, pop out the right way, we turned to the low setting and to the high setting. The low setting, we backed this adjustable screw closer in. That has the effect of allowing this plate to come further forward before it contacts this bar, then the initial release here that pops back and lets this piece go up the first click, then allows this plate to come far enough forward that it'll drop down and release the toaster after about 10 or 15 more seconds. And so we tested it now on the low the medium and the high settings uh, and it releases every time. So this appears to be the culprit for the adjustment. And then also you'll see in here there's a screw right in here that allows you to uh, adjust this uh, if you want to get the arrow pointed to the light and then to the dark. Uh, on the outside of the toaster, and you can adjust that as needed.
Now, depending on the year of the Toastmaster, yours might look a little different. This is a different one that we have as well. You'll notice here the button is red, and you'll also notice here, instead of flat uh, strips of metal, there's actual wire connections on the underside for the bimetallic strip. Another difference you'll notice here relative to the other toaster is on the light darkness setting. This is just a solid post. You have fixed movement on the interior. And so I think this is a maybe a better design uh, because we haven't had a problem with this toaster. So when you put everything back together, make sure that you have all of your ceramic sleeves over the top of each of the heating element tabs. Any screws or nuts that you've taken off, make sure they're put back on. Um, again, because the current has to flow through each of these uh, from this plate. It works its way through and across. Reinsert the wires here that separate the toast from the heating elements. Straight down inside here, you'll see the holes at the bottom. These will go down into the hole and then the upper part, the hook will go through these loops. Just pop one of those down and then let it sit in place. And we'll go through and do the rest of those. Do not tip this over because if these come back out, it's gonna be a mess. So before we put the chrome lid back on, test and make sure that the toaster mechanism clicks at the bottom, that you have everything in place. Of course, it's unplugged now. And then hold this and just push in here to release and make sure that the arms go up and down without any interruption. Okay, then I'll take this Bakelite knob off. We're gonna put that back on at the end. I'll take a screwdriver and I'll turn this back in all the way to make it easier for us to get the chrome piece back on. You'll notice when you go to put the chrome back on, it's only gonna fit on one way, okay? Look at the top, it is asymmetric and the wider chrome piece is going to accommodate this extra space right here. And then check as we do, especially for the wire. Um, I've checked to make sure that my wire connection here is good. And then we'll put the lid back on. And just settle it down. And eventually it'll work its way in. You just have to kind of be careful with it. Okay. Once you have the piece, the top chrome piece all the way down, again, make sure that slider here for the toast is in the slot. Make sure that you've cleared this opening for the light dark setting and that your other side for the power cable has the spacer on the inside and is not obstructed. Okay, now that should be seated down nice and firm here. Once you have the base piece firmly pressed in to the chrome, we have to start reattaching some of the screws before we can put on the cover plate and the Bakelite. I'll start with the power side. Make sure that the wires got the sheath in behind here okay and that this clip is going to slide through that slot right there and bend this in just going to get that hooked in place and then with that in place the deal with these screws which are going to fit into these slots and then be pushed up and so we're just going to kind of feel for that there Okay, once that's in place, you're gonna push that right up and that's gonna seat pretty firmly in position. Now, same thing on this side. You have that slot that you have to get this lever in. 
We're gonna push the toaster lever down. And when we slide this in, we're gonna to try to look for that piece to get it lined up. Once that's in place, we're just gonna, there we go. So catch and hold it up. And then you can push that in and test. Now it's catching, so that's good. We can take four screw, excuse me, two screws here and here, are the two small ones. They're gonna go inside here for the crumb tray. And we'll slide this in. You'll have one lip to go underneath the Bakelite. Spin this open. And then you're gonna line up those holes right inside here. One there and one there. And the last step will be the four screws into the Bakelite. So we'll do those from above. Make sure your crumb tray clips. We'll flip it around and you want to check your light dark knob and put it in that hole and gently screw it in. Careful not to cross thread it. And it's going to go in. Remember we left it on the dark, excuse me, on the light setting. So it should stop right there. And again, if you need to adjust it, there's that small central screw right there. So now with it in place, I should be able to rotate to dark and to light. And so we're just gonna go back and forth, make sure it's not too loose. And then that's it. Just a final test to make sure that all four heating elements are working and they are. So we're in business here. Also, we're timing it here to make sure that the toaster releases when it's done. And it worked.